Emma, this is Dave from Jamaica. Dave from Hi, Jamaica. Hi, You're my first ever call operating the phone system on my own, and it's I'm so glad that it's you. Oh, well, yeah, don't make me blush. Yeah. <laughs> How are so, you doing today? Uh, I'm doing fine. How are you all doing? Um, I guess to kind of go back to the point you and Francesca were talking about with the I call it. I don't know if I'd call it a civil war in the Republican Party because I think I already know which side is going to win. Mm. Because it seems like the Trump side is going to win. They have already won. If we look on the behavior of the leadership, right? Yeah. So I don't know if we have to worry about putting a wedge between that one. I think that fight is um, done. But among Trump, among the Trump people, do you? Y'all see any divisions that could be exploited? So, Dave, I don't know if I'd agree with you that they fully won. I mean, in the House, I think that's more the case because they're more connected. They're less wealthy in in general, and they're more connected to, like, Republican grassroots. In the Senate, they want to be rid of this this shit. Like, they want to be done. Like, the McConnells of the world, the, you know, outside of the really MAGA loyalists... I, I don't know if I, I fully agree. I mean, I think there could be a civil war between maybe the House and the Senate Republicans. But mm. I oh. think the I would say the opportunity is with kind of what AOC is doing with Cruz and uh, Pelosi is doing with Marjorie Taylor Greene, which is you're not really attacking the extreme fringes when you um, go after these people. You're really making it harder for the Republican moderates who yeah. that's who we need to go after now. So we can dispel this bullshit about there being bipartisan solutions to our current moment. So I think I'm really heartened that Pelosi is going after Marjorie and AOC is doing this Ted Cruz thing. And we should uh, encourage that sort of division because like, I agree that, you know, the mass of the Republican party is MAGA, right? Um, and but that means but that means you can't work across the aisle with them. Um, so I think it's I, I would say that's the opportunity there. Yeah, I mean, that's that's sort of what I was talking about earlier is just, you know, as much as you might be right, that they that like the MAGA has more of the energy right now. It's got the grassroots energy, I guess, somehow, but that we can't sort of be fatalistic about it, because what happens when we are is that uh we get a bunch of QAnon crazies in the Senate. And I think we've seen folks who've held the, you know, centrist liberal line. You even have the New York Times, of course, you know, being like too many executive orders. I mean, they're so willing to roll over to allow full blown fascism. So once again, it's not our fight, but somehow we have to, as progressives, be the ones to be like, you know, drawing these lines in the sand. And I'm glad that AOC continually brings up January 6th because never forget. Um, But I do think, you know, it's an interesting question to talk about Q. You know, it's like, well, the prophecy didn't come true. It's probably a psyop. Can we move on from Q? Like if you're talking about wedges in the, you know, the fringe or in MAGA, that might be one. What? What? I guess um, to go back to the part where you said you're not sure about the Senate. Well, after seeing how Mitch McConnell behaved before he was signaling, yeah, hey, I'm going to impeach Trump. And now he's like, well, this thing's not really constitute. That tells me already they, they, they already know who's going to win, even mm-hmm. on the Senate side. So, but uh, as for, I know it's difficult trying to find out wedge issues with crazy people, but... <laughs> Uh, they, I do think they're going to be, yeah, as you said, Q, the dominant thing will be the Trump side of things. So I'm hoping maybe that will kind of force the Dems to <laughs> fill a bus. Not because they want to, but they literally have no other option because the Republicans only have one mode of operation. Yeah, and I, I, I sorry, Francesca, did you want to say something? Oh, uh, I was just going to say, I mean, I think that somehow getting to the root of the fact that these movements we're seeing now have all stemmed from the astroturfing of the Tea Party movement under, you know, in 2008 and nine. And it when we can overturn Citizens United, whether it is stacking the courts, whatever it like, whether it is a move to amend the Constitution, as hard as that might be, but getting dark money out of our politics is a way to nullify all these movements. I realize that that feels very pie in the sky. 
the other thing I was going to say is it's an interesting moment because you see like centrist Republicans and Democrats, progressives, and then like MAGA Republicans all being like, who's going to break for a third party first? And, um, you know, they're all kind of like, Ugh. Who, are you going to mm, are you going to do it? Because, you know, we know that third party politics in this two party duopoly, you know, is pretty is a losing game, sadly, on a federal level, as much as I don't want that to be true. But I also think that we can always try and keep goading Trump to launch the Patriot Party. You yeah. know, hey, man, go your you go your own way. Do it. Do it. Now he's saying now he's saying and meeting with McCarthy. We talked about this earlier in the show that he's going to help with these uh, w- with the midterms um, in 2022, and oh, yeah. I, I, mm-hmm. I have my doubts that he actually will fucking help. Like, no. I think he's so lazy. Um, and now that he doesn't have his social media validation, like, I, I don't, I, I, I don't know what's in I, it for I, him. I put the calculation slightly different because remember, Trump used to be the most powerful man in the world. It, it, there ain't going to be nothing left in his life that's going to match that. So he's, he's not leaving politics. He, he, no amount of money is going to leave that. He's, he seems vindictive of, enough to make sure to punish all the traitors. So, 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 so yeah. probably that. I, I want to bring in a little bit of impromptu Dave Rubin report um, into this conversation. <laughs> Please. Uh, a, few, a week or so ago, he had a, a roundtable. Uh, with uh, Dr. Sebastian Gorka, Sean Spicer, and a guy named Jack Murphy. Um, and they were, what was that, Emma? I just said a meeting of the minds. Exactly, yeah. Um, and so I just want to share this because Ruben, this is kind of like the conversation that, you know, uh, the left has with regards to can we go third party? Well, here's what Gorka's uh, position is. The future of this thing is would be interesting. Gorka, w- what do you think the future, the future of MAGA he's talking about? What future, is the beard? Uh, the Republicans is. Is it is it a Trump future or are they going back to, to all the other guys? Well, I'll tell you one thing. It better not be a third party, Dave. So um, that would be a disaster. That's how we got Bill Clinton when Ross Perot uh, ran uh, against uh, Clinton and split the conservative vote. Uh, look, I, I listened to my, my sources. Uh, I had one of the new uh, freshman congresswomen on my show, Lauren Bobbitt, who's already created quite a name for herself, who said... By uh, doing mass diarrhea to 80 plus people, including reports of de- bloody stool at Shooter's Grill his records but anyway i digress oh, and, look at on, the on toys my... yeah yes just, okay just the gorka toys i didn't ever want to see there's a minion of course there's burton ernie there's bin laden burton and ernie um the uh, stalwarts uh, of western civilization but what show is this from uh it's like the dalek i know but i forget the show it's called um, Doctor Who, isn't it? Doctor Who. <laughs> Doctor, oh, he, oh, Dr. Gorka watching Doctor Who. <laughs> anyway. I show America first. This is Donald Trump's party now. I don't know what he's going to do in 2024. I was there at Andrews Air Force Base with Sean. So, yeah, anyway, that's, I feel like that's interesting. Like, I think, Ma, like, they all think MAGA has it locked up. So, absolutely don't start a third party. I think the Patriot Party should be encouraged. <laughs> I think it's funny, but I think. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's I mean, what Emma was saying was that, like, can he actually campaign on other people's behalf? I mean, look at Georgia. Right. It took every bone in his body to campaign uh, for two people whose names I now forget. No, Purdue and Leffler. And they lost. And so he and he's just like everything, he, anything to make it not about himself. He can't do. Ergo, Patriot Party, bro. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I my still one of the most underrated moments from Trump was right at the end c- campaigning for Martha McSally, where he goes, "Quick, Martha, quick, quick, come on, sit <laughs> here from you, quick, come on." Also, I'm I have to correct my- chopper. I have to correct myself really quick or the Doctor Who fans will get upset. It wasn't the Dalek. That was the TARDIS. So I apologize to Doctor Who fans in the chat that are blowing it up right now. Oh, Apology no. accepted. Who gives a shit? Um, anyway. <laughs> I'm I think uh, I, I think I've been on the line long enough, but I do find oh, it <laughs> boys very interesting. Even his '80s collection of RoboCop memorabilia. <laughs> <laughs> nice. 